This ain't your ordinary football show. It's the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rader and Coach Bobby Wilder. Brought to you by Priority Automotive. Talk about your role reversals. The much maligned Old Dominion defense had taken its lumps during the first five games and were determined to turn things around against Liberty. And boy, did they. Turning in perhaps the best performance in, on defense in ODU history. That allowed quarterback Taylor Heineke to work his magic again with a game-winning touchdown pass to Blair Roberts with only seconds on the clock. This t week, the team got a break, their bye week, before traveling to Pittsburgh next Saturday. So where are we halfway through this transition season? Let's find out. The Old Dominion Football Show starts now. I'm Bruce Rader along with Coach Bobby Wilder. We have some time to look back at last week's Liberty game. And I have to ask you, Coach, how proud were you of your defense? Uh, I was incredibly proud, Bruce. When I think about the fact that 26 players played on defense in this game, we're, we're going to stick to the rotation, Bruce. We're going to keep working to get our players better. 26 of them played, and what was really critical, Bruce, that I was most proud of is in the fourth quarter, the last 11 minutes when we were down 17-7, to our defense came up with big stop after big stop. They kept us in the game when it didn't look very good at that point, so really proud of these guys. Big wins are nice, but as mm -hmm. you transition up to FBS, close right. games, win or lose, mm -hmm. show your team's character. Yeah, that's a great point you bring up, Bruce, because when I had said last week and you and I were talking, Liberty was the best team we had played since we played East Carolina and Maryland, and they came in with a good plan, Turner Gill and his staff. They were aggressive. They attacked us, and we weren't having a lot of success, Bruce, particularly on offense in the red zone, but when you look at the last five minutes of this game, Bruce, there were... There were 25 plays in this game that I termed with our team as game over plays. And what I meant by that, 192 total snaps. The last 25 snaps when we were down 17 to 7, anything goes wrong, game over. So critical third and 11 stop with five minutes to go. Scott Wiggins, freshman DN, breaks up a screen. Then Aaron Evans takes that punt return, goes for a touchdown. Three true freshman, Bruce, on that punt return unit with critical blocks. Then we get the stop on defense. Then we get the two-minute drill. So those last 25 plays, anything goes wrong, it's game over. That develops character in your football team. Yeah, but up to that last five minutes, mm -hmm. your offense was not mm -hmm. looking very sharp at all. Three fourth down stops, right. two interceptions in the end zone. Was it mm -hmm. just one of those nights? A lot of it, I think, had to do with the fact that it was one of those nights, Bruce, because you look at us leading up to this. 29 of our last 30 trips in the red zone we score, top percentage in the country. 25 of those are touchdowns. That's hard to do. When you get down inside that 20 yard line and then the 10, the five, it's hard to score because the defense has got the 12th man in the back of the end zone as a defender, they can play you tighter. We get down there six times, Bruce, we only score once. Three fourth and ones, as you mentioned. Uh, two interceptions by Taylor in the end zone. Nice play by their kids. I don't want to take anything away from Liberty. And then we missed a couple field goals. We could have scored 62 points in this game, Bruce. Lack of execution, you and I talked about this last week after the Albany game, even though we had 66 points in all those yards, some lack of execution, great lessons for our guys to learn, but I really like the way they finished. But in true Taylor Heineke fashion, he comes <laughs> through with the game winner in the final seconds. Yeah, what a drive, Bruce, that last drive. Six plays, 73 yards, only 58 seconds. We actually left too much time on the clock, but the way the O-line picked up, we had a couple blitzes in there. Uh, the job by the running backs, the receivers, and Blair Roberts, Bruce, those last two catches were critical. We got Liberty, Bruce, on that last play because of our pace. They had a mistake in coverage. They didn't get the proper coverage check, which is why Blair looks so wide open. So great job by Taylor. This is the sixth time in his 27 career starts that he's led us on a drive in the fourth quarter to win it. Everybody in the offense, really critical how they performed late. Let's talk about Taylor, though. He was mm -hmm. doing his RG3 imitation, <laughs> trying to tough out those final extra yards. Right. But in your system, the quarterback mm -hmm. can't put himself at risk. No, he can't, Bruce. And this is really hard on our quarterbacks, whether it's Taylor Heineke. This used to happen with Thomas DeMarco. We've seen it a little bit already with David Washington, his limited reps. Coach Whitcomb, our, our quarterback coach, is very clear with our quarterbacks. He tells them every time they lower their shoulder to run somebody over, they're being selfish because they could hurt the football team. They could get injured and leave. You mentioned RG3. Look what's happened with him with the Redskins. There's just times where you, you can't do that. Now, the play had happened, Bruce. There's nine minutes left in the game. 
We're second and goal on the seven. Taylor slips out on the left side going down towards the student section, gets to the three yard line, decides to lower his shoulder on the corner instead of just stepping out of bounds, which is what he always does. But we were trailing 17 to seven. He let his competitiveness get the best of him. Now we love his competitiveness, but you gotta make good choices too. So this bye week couldn't have come at a better time. Tell right. us about your injury situation. Yeah, right now, Bruce, we've got about 16 kids that are, that are bumped and bruised, some a little more serious than others. David Bourne went under, uh, underwent surgery uh, on Wednesday by our outstanding doctor, Dr. Schaefer, uh, to clean up some meniscus in both knees bruised, not just one, but both. Uh, we feel like, based on what Dr. Schaefer has told us, three to four weeks, possibly back for the Idaho game. Taylor, we talked about his concussion. He should be. Fine. And then the other guys, a lot of bumps and bruises. I had held Nate Barnes and Terrell Reed out of the Liberty game, two starting D linemen, because I just didn't feel comfortable they were healthy enough. Should have everybody back uh, other than David Bourne for the pick game. All right. Other than the final touchdown pass, if you had to pick one play that turned Saturday night's game around, you would have to pick the 64-yard punt return by Aaron <laughs> right. Evans and the punt team. It was such a big play that Chris Reckling had to make a trip to the campus this week to talk to Aaron about it. ODU senior Aaron Evans has spent a lot of time lately answering text messages, all of them very flattering. I got a text from an old teammate, from an old teammate and said, looking like prime time out there, why don't they put you on offense, bro? <laughs> That's what you get when you turn around a game on one single play. Uh, it's been a lot of people coming up to me, patting me on the back. It's been a... a Good feeling inside knowing that you helped the team, you played a big part in the team's wins. The Newport News native normally splits the return duties with Antonio Vaughn and he usually is calling for a fair catch. And believe it or not, this was his first return. We keep putting in all these new blocks, so I never really get a chance to return the ball. I just fair catch it because the block is, most of the time we don't block it and we don't have no blockers, so it's just block or nothing. I just said, coach, just, just one. Back in 2010, Evans returned a kickoff against Savannah State for a score, but on this homecoming night, in front of family and friends, he turned in the biggest play of his college career. It was big. Uh, I couldn't, I'm not really playing a lot this year as a senior because, I mean, a lot of stuff has been going on, so it was just it was big for me to make a play for the team and act as a leader for the team. And we come out with a win, it was just big. And being homecoming, it was even bigger. In Norfolk, Chris Reckling for the Old Dominion Football Show. Thank you, Chris. Still to come, he had the game-winning catch Saturday night against Liberty, but now the hard part for Blair Roberts as he enters the one-minute drill with Nathan Epstein. Plus, Coach Wilder answers your questions in a very special edition. He had two touchdowns against Liberty on Saturday, but now wide receiver Blair Roberts faces some real heat as he <laughs> enters the one-minute drill with Nathan Epstein. Welcome back to the one-minute drill. This time it is Blair Roberts. So Blair, right off the gun, you told us you got a pretty good Coach Wilder impersonation. Yeah, I could do a pretty good, good uh, Wilder impression. Uh, here it goes. Uh, men, we're very competitive. We're gonna do everything right. We fight to win. Stay between the lines and play your game. <laughs> If I could ask you, what is the movie quote that most sums you up? Everybody eats. Everybody eats. Yeah. From? Uh, paid in full. Where is the one place in the world that you really, really want to go? Uh, Dubai. Why is that? Just the scenery. It looks amazing. I looked some pictures up on the internet and everything. It, it looks uh, pretty fun. I think I want to try it. How much you plan on growing the beard out? Um, I'm gonna just keep going. I don't, I, I'm like pretty attached to it, so I don't think I'm ever gonna cut it. Are like, you attached like, to it or is it attached to you? Both. <laughs> Same. What's the best end zone touchdown dance you've ever had? Uh, I don't do too many touchdown dances. Uh, coach tells us to act like we've been there before, so you hand the ball to the ref. You ever want to do a touchdown dance? Not really. And if you could have any meal after a win, what would it be? Um, mom's fried chicken and spaghetti. You have survived the one minute drill. Thank you very much. Right. Say goodbye to the Monarch Nation. Right, Monarch Nation. Coach Blair Roberts has really been one of your leaders among the wide receivers. He sure has, Bruce. 33 catches for 346 yards and five touchdowns to this point. He's our leader in receptions, our leader in touchdowns, none bigger than that one Saturday night. And the other thing, Bruce, I really like about him, he's one of the most competitive players on our team. You watch him block sometime. Really impressive. All right, still to come, it's an extra special edition uh -oh. of the Coach's uh, Corner. No. And trust me, <laughs> you don't want to miss this one. It's 
coming up next. Time to hear what you fans have to say. It's a special edition of the Coach's Corner. Here's the first question. Hey, Coach Wilder. Thomas DeMarco here from Vancouver, British Columbia. This Friday night at 7 o'clock Mountain West time, Deron Mayo and the Calgary Stampeders will be facing the BC Lions and yours truly. Both ODU alumni, who will you be cheering for? <laughs> <laughs> I am hoping for a tie in this game. Thomas DeMarco throws for 400. Deron Mayo, can I say, has sacks and interceptions, Bruce? As long as he doesn't hurt DeMarco. Hurt Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> so excited. Two alumni playing in this game. Great job by Thomas and Deron. All right, here's your next one. Hey, Coach Wilder, this is Jay from Bristol, class of 87. I'd like to ask you, when can I suit up, man? I've got to have some eligibility left. i got speed in these old legs. I do. I really do. When? <laughs> Bruce, Jay Harris has been told, come back. You can play. We'll run you down on kickoff. Let's go, Jay. We need you. Great to have an alumnus in Bristol. And, hey, he can come in and do the sports. I can take the <laughs> night off. How about that? Two alumni in playing professional football, another anchor in Sports Center, wow. Old Dominion, man, I'll tell you. <laughs> We're stepping up. We're raising the bar. <laughs> Every week. What are your priorities, Coach, for the second half of the season? Number one, to go undefeated at home, Bruce. We're 4-0 at home right now. We want to get to 6-0. That would be absolutely critical. Never been undefeated before. Number two, first play of the East Carolina to the last play of the North Carolina game. Want to see improvement. That's critical for this team with 49 new players, 34 first-time players. Got to keep getting better. And number three, win an FBS game. We've got Pittsburgh, Idaho, North Carolina. We're 0-2 right now against FBS teams. We got to get a win in one of those three games. Those are the priorities. Coach, I wanted to save some time during this bye week to ask you, as you wrap up your bye week with mm -hmm. six games left right. on the schedule, the all-important question, where mm -hmm. is this team now? Well, right now, Bruce, we are, we are truly a team in transition. The number one thing we're trying to develop is good, good team chemistry, getting the guys to really work together. With so many new faces, Bruce, imagine this, 93 players, 49 of them just got here. So just trying to get guys to know each other, to trust each other. As you know, whether it's the workforce, whether it's football, if, if you know the people you work with, you're comfortable, you feel better around them. So that's the number one thing, that chemistry. And then getting the game experience. We keep talking about each week how many younger players we're playing. The best thing to develop a football team and a player is game experience, and that's happening right now. All right, Coach, you get the weekend off? Mm-hmm. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a little time for the, the players and the coaching staff. Yeah, it is. This is a great weekend. I've, I've asked everybody to just take the weekend off. The players' booths haven't had a day off since August 3rd. Neither of the coaches. Be good for all of us. All right. Remember, no game this week. Another uh, ACC opponent next week is the Monarchs travel to Pittsburgh. Join us next week for the Old Dominion Football Show.